Hey everybody, Ekiris here. Welcome back to The Long Dark, Iron Woman of Timberwolf Mountain, episode number 28. So, we have all the components we need for the bear hide uh, bedroll. But we just need um, these hides to actually cure. So, I think what I'm going to do is something that I, I don't think I've done it before in any of my series, but I will actually go ahead and time lapse and jump ahead. Um, I'm gonna do some sleep cycling here because I got plenty of food. There's really no reason for me to be going out and uh, Taking unnecessary risks just for the sake of uh, killing time. I mean we got all kinds of food if I run out of food Before those bear hides have cured um, You know, I'll take you along for the hunt things like that if anything of, of importance happens obviously I'll do that, but I'll just go ahead and basically um, cook up water um, Go, you know what, I'll go get some firewood right now and I'll take you guys along for that and while I cook up water, but once I get my food and my uh, firewood and my water all established and I'm just ready to basically sleep and, and, and be a hermit here I think I'm just going to go ahead and sleep cycle because there's no point in you guys, I mean i tell you what sitting around for 8 episodes just waiting for a bear hide to cure and uh, got more actually we got more meat that we can go I think there's more meat out there we can grab, so I probably do want to do that. How are we doing on, uh, we're a little winded. I can probably drop a lot of this stuff here and just go grab the rest of it real quick. Um, less than one hour of daylight left. We'll go back out there in the morning and grab the rest of that food. Let me go grab some, uh, wood while we're, while we're sitting here. And, um, yeah, I think that's the way we'll approach it, so you guys can stick with me through, uh, until we clear that carcass and then uh, after that I'll just uh, cook up some water and uh, basically start sleep cycling and I, I, I've done that before where I've actually had you guys stick around for the sleep cycling episodes and they are incredibly boring episodes honestly there's only so much I can talk about I'm, I'm, I'm an okay commentator I'm not that okay um, so anyway I got a buddy of mine who's actually applying for my, my old police department in Springfield, Springfield uh, PD, and uh, he's, uh, I'm not going to give names because I don't want it to leak out, but uh, he's actually looking at uh, applying for another police department in the area. It's one of the highest paid in Ohio, and he's basically going from about 50, if he gets a job, which they require a college degree or be actively enrolled in a bachelor pro program, um, and then a one-year police experience and... Uh, um, that sort of thing, but uh, if he if he gets the job, it'll be a, a basically a, almost a doubling in his salary. It'd go from about fifty six fifty five thousand per year uh, base pay to right around uh, after the next contract. This new department's going to be at eighty nine thousand a year, which is quite a bit for Ohio. I mean, it's way more than I'm making now. I actually um, worked for that department for a few months way back in like two thousand four, but I went back to Springfield. I don't know. I'm just, I was, what a stupid move that was. I just I was too young at the time and uh, a little stubborn. I was a square peg in a round hole and um, just sort of didn't really uh, buy in to their uh, to their methods. So you know um, that I should I should, you know I, I was too immature at the time, uh, but I did get a job there and uh, I think everyone thought I was crazy for going back to Springfield afterwards. But. Anyway, I wrote down some suggestions. He said, hey, you got any suggestions for me for the interview? I'm like, yeah, you, you're going to want to know the answer to, which is, there is no correct answer, but to um, to the old question, uh, so you get this car going 15 over the limit, you pull the car over, and it's your mom. What are you going to do? <laughs> and uh, the answers they do not want to hear is, I'm going to call for another officer to handle it, and I'm going to call for a supervisor, or I'm going to call for a supervisor. They want you to be able to be decisive, um, make a decision, explain your logic behind it, and stick to it. They're going to try to make you feel like an idiot no matter what you do. If you say, hey, I'm going to cut her loose, they're going to like get all indignant. Ah, what do you mean you're going to just give her a warning? You know, that's not fair. The eyes of justice are blind. And then it's like, okay, well, we live in the real world. I'm not giving my mom a ticket because, you know, why should I be punished for the next 25 years of my life at every Thanksgiving meal being reminded about... Uh, me giving her a ticket, you know, <laughs> and getting the crappy bits of the turkey. Um, so that that's a grudge that we keep on giving. Um, plus, you could always say, hey, my mom brought me into this world. She could take me out of this world. I, I don't think I'm going to be uh, uh, opening that uh, Pandora's box anytime soon. 
but uh, or you could say hey I'm gonna give her a ticket and then you gotta stick by it you know why because man she knows where I work she knows what she's doing she 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 should know better you know and why would you that sort of thing but they want to hear you stick to it and they're gonna say are you kidding me you're gonna give your mom a ticket and you know so they'll play it both ways but I just told me to stick with it expect that question and then uh, uh, let's see what else was there let's uh, let's make sure that we're let's gonna get some drink here um, one of them that got me when I uh, had applied for, for Dublin PD was uh, what are the five exceptions to uh, well it's actually really bright outside that's amazing kind of want to go out and just get it now but uh, let's drop our water here for now and uh, go boil up a little bit more I guess or maybe we'll cook up a few meat well let's see how much meat we have we'll probably do that first Alright, so let's drop that water there. How many meats do we have? We got I see these two right here. Do we have some in here that have been cooked? I think we do. Oh yeah, we got plenty of meat, so let's focus on water. Alright, let's see if we can do this for a couple more hours here. Uh, what are the five uh, physically arrestable uh, offenses, or reasons to physically arrest somebody for a uh, minor misdemeanor citation? And like, I'd have to actually go look at it. I know, like, one is, like, the person cannot care for themselves, if they fail to identify themselves to the police officer, uh, if they refuse to sign a ticket, and there's, like, two other ones. But, uh, that I can't, that I'm drawing a blank on right now. But, uh, I told him, be prepared for that, because I got thrown that question from another department that, uh, sort of prides themselves in being the best of the best. Anyway, uh, let's cook up water. Where are you at, water? Um, what else was there? Um, told him to make sure he had a few questions ready to go for them, because they always ask at the end of the interviews, you got any questions for us? And uh, it's always good for them to <clears throat> have you, have, you know, have you engage them and, and uh, ask some, you know, decent questions about their department and things like that. I said that one of the questions should also be, uh, can I do a ride along with your department? Uh, just so I get a better feel of it. And it's kind of like a win-win because you get a better feel for the department and they uh, they get sort of a mini internship uh, extra interview with you for eight hours and they can always go ask that officer or sergeant that you rode with hey what's your take on them what's your gut feeling so it's just another way to get your face known and recognized before that second interview after the background checks and the polygraphs and all that stuff and then uh, what else was there um heck I got it written down here oh. He responded, uh, "Thanks, bro. I appreciate all the good pointers and information. I hope, I hope I do well. He'll do fine. He's a good officer. He's a really good officer. Um, oh, tell us a weakness that you have. That's a question that um, it always seems to be uh, in these interviews. And uh, mine is forgetfulness, and it's the truth. I am forgetful. Um, and I said my answer is typically I'm forgetful, so I have to uh, learn by role-playing situations in my head to sort of." make a connection that way and writing things or writing things down immediately if that doesn't you know if it's not applicable the role playing thing um, it also forces me to write very detailed reports just in case I end up on the stand so something like that you know um, what else was there yeah, I told him not to rush his answers uh, if they st they'll start trying to do rapid fire uh, I've seen interviews like that where they start to try to do rapid fire and try to overwhelm you and, and you start you start answering faster and, and uh, you know, things just get moving quick and then they start just hammering you and you, you're not controlling the pace they are. And it's sort of like being on the street in a lot of ways because, uh, let's go ahead and drink. We're going to go ahead and get some sleep now. Um, because there will be times when you're out on the street and people just start hit hammering you with question after question after question. And a lot of it's unintentional, but sometimes when you're dealing with, um, people, you know, it might not even be questions, it might just be statements trying to overwhelm you, sensory overload sort of thing. Um, they're just trying to uh, throw you off your game, especially if they're criminals that know what they're doing. So they might be trying to uh, just completely divide your attention amongst three different conversations they're trying to have with you. And the best thing to do is just to slow it down. Stop. Pause. Address one person. Pause. Listen to the next question. Pause. You know, you don't have to answer straight away. As a matter of fact, just uh, 
taking a pause and actually thinking things through so it shows that you're actually thinking about what they're saying. So it, it almost adds to the engagement level. So I told him to do that. Don't rush it. Pretend that you're uh, Bob Martin, who happens to be a guy at my old apartment that would literally, the dispatch would typically end up having to call him, call him twice on the radio because he would pause even before he answered dispatch. It'd be like, you know, 212 Edward. And he'd go, reach over and pick up the mic. And by now, the dispatch is going, 212 Edward. Yeah, he picks up and goes, 212 Edward, go ahead. <laughs> and he would do that in every conversation he had, no matter what it was. And uh, he was just deliberate. And the, the funny thing was, he was really fast. Like, he was really in the, he was a pretty skinny guy, pretty quick on his feet. And they used to call him Slow Bob because of uh, because of that. But uh, it worked for him. I want to grab some meat here, too. And uh, it will, te it, I mean, it'll just control the pace. And I think they want to see you be, remain calm, don't get flustered, control the pace. So I could see them do that. And then I said, other than that, just, you know, be yourself because he's a great officer and uh, they'd be lucky to have him. And walk in there not thinking, I hope I get the job. I hope I get one of the multiple hiring spots that they're going to be doing. Walk in there, um, and I should have probably waited on eating that a little bit piece right there. Walk in there not hoping to get the job, but hoping you get picked first. You get the number one spot. And uh, you go in there with that sort of confidence without being cocky, which he isn't. It's not in his nature. Then uh, he'll be doing fine. So anyway, I'm rooting for him. I'm kind of excited for him. So I'll keep you guys posted. But it'll be really, really good um, uh, step up for him and his family and all that. Unfortunately, my old department, they're uh, having some, the city's having some really bad budget problems, and uh, they got a lot of people jumping ship, it seems like. A lot of veterans, I mean, people with like day shifts seniority after like 12 years jumping, thinking about jumping ship, and anyway. Alright, so here we go, we're still tired, we've got 12 hours of daylight left, let's see what the uh, weather's like. I just want to go skin that. That's good enough. Well, it's actually 25 degrees. Let's rest a little bit longer. All right. I actually had to go to the hospital last night. I got a food impaction. I have uh, esophageal something or other itis. I can't remember how it said. My I always have to tell my wife. Tell them what I have. But uh, basically, it means there's some sort of a, a localized allergic reaction that can occur in my esophagus. I don't have a, 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 a a narrowing of my esophagus anywhere that needs dilated or anything. It just happens occasionally with certain foods. And it's pretty, really random. But uh, I actually had some chicken from a chicken burrito that got stuck for like five hours in my throat. Not my air, not my windpipe, but my, you know, esophagus. So I could breathe fine. I could do all that fine. But I couldn't swallow anything at all. Uh, fluids, uh, solids, nothing. And uh, so I was basically trying to intentionally get myself to spit up by drinking water, milk, uh, carbonated sodas, things like that. Um, eventually I got to the point where uh, I had to go to the hospital. Luckily for me, my wife... What's the temperature here? 35. Oh, we're in good shape. Okay, let's go. My, uh, let's see. How much do I want to carry? 58 pounds. That's quite a bit. Let's let's drop everything because we're not going to be out. We know exactly what we're where we're going and what we're doing. My wife uh, actually used to work on the unit. <laughs> she used to get called in for this exact thing. So... She had uh, she actually had all the doctors um, on her cell phone, so she called a few of them, and uh, let's drop the water over here. She called uh, one of the doctors who happened to be on call and uh, told them what was going on, and um, then she was able to call the nurse, ex explain it, so they gave everybody a heads up, and it's kind of nice. We had the doctor going in before we even made it to the ER, and uh, basically made it to the ER, and the, doc the doctor that we were... Uh, 51 pounds, that's 16 pounds. I think we should be good with that. We're going to be a little little bit overweight, but we'll be all right. Um, I think we'll probably only need to carry about 30, so we'll be about 15 over. That's not too hateful. We don't really have to go that far anyway, so not too worried about it. I uh, just don't really want to be a meat lollipop for that uh, puppy over there. But uh, we made it into the ER, and, and uh, we were able to... The ER doc was thrilled when he heard that, oh, hey, you're supposed to call Dr. Beck and... Uh, uh, on a cell phone if you wouldn't mind uh, he's going to be 
uh, we're going to be expediting this. Because normally in the ER, I guess they give you a couple different things to, um, different medications to try to get it to pass on its own. But I guess Dr. Beck, the guy who was on call, didn't want to uh, get a wait for that to take effect and then get called in at 4 a.m. So he's like, you know, it's like, it was like 10 at night. So he's like, just head on up there and we'll just knock it out real quick. So I get there and uh, go into the ER, get admitted, get sent back to my room. And then I'm sitting there talking. And I had the hiccups the whole time too. And... Uh, get back to my room and I'm talking I had my little bucket that I took from home to basically spit up my saliva in when enough of it would uh, accumulate which was about every 15 to 20 minutes and uh, 33 pounds that was close uh, we're gonna have to use the hatchet because it's frozen it's freaking frozen out here Mr. Bigglesworth but um, went ahead and started spitting up and then I talked to the doctor we were joking around talked to the nurse joking around talking to the uh, guy from registration you know coming in getting more information and uh, why are we bleeding was that the thirst really no oh, let's get a drink real quick then. it looks like blood looks like a blood drop I think we should be good now there we go okay um, talk to the guy from registration and then after a while my wife looks at me she's like did it pass and I said well I didn't feel it because it, it wasn't like it was painful or anything it was just sort of uncomfortable but it got to the point where like, they asked me what my pain threshold was, but on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, 1 being no pain at all, and 10 being the worst pain you've ever had in your life, what what would you rank this as for pain? I'm like, 1, because it's more uncomfortable, and that. there's like no pain, it's just, you can feel that there's something there. So, uh, anyway, uh, I hadn't really noticed, and she's like, you stopped hiccuping, have you passed it? Like, as it, and I was like, well, no, I didn't spit anything up. It's all been saliva. She goes, well, maybe you actually passed it and it went into your stomach. So I'm like, I don't know. Can, can I have a glass of water? So I got a glass of water. And the nurse, the nurse uh, who wasn't my wife in the room, uh, said, take a small sip, you know, and uh, see how it goes. I took a small sip. Everything seemed okay, but that can be deceiving. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and chug this and see what happens. I have my bucket there and everything, so I'm good. And uh, so I went ahead and chugged it. And it went straight down, no problem. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, and this burrito is from this place called Victor's Taco Shop. And it's a new place. And oh my God, it's like literally, like I like really nice restaurants and some really good food. And I mean, I have expensive tastes when it comes to food. Uh, this little taco shop is now my favorite restaurant. And I think it's probably, hold on, I thought I heard. I either heard the wind or heard one of my little ones crying. Um, but this little taco shop is literally... I think it might have some of the best food I've ever had in my life. Huh. Okay, well, I heard it again. I'm not... Oh, that is my little one. Okay, I'll be back here in a second. Hold on, give me one second here, people. All right, everybody. Well, yeah, she was crying a little bit. She's had a, this is the oldest one, two and a half year old one. She's had a couple of rough nights. I think she might have some teeth coming in up top or something like that and making it a little more difficult for her, but she's all tucked in, very happy as can be, and really only took about three or four minutes. Um, but uh, she looks uh, very content now. So anyway, um, black bear meat, mmm. Where was I? Oh yeah. So uh, anyway, this this taco place or this taco uh, Victor's taco shop. Um, the burrito is what got me. It was a chicken burrito, and um, that thing ended up costing me well it was six ninety five for the burrito, and then it was two hundred and sixty seven dollars for the ER visit, where they basically admitted me and then discharged me without doing anything. Um, but uh, so what was that? That's about I don't know. Right, around 270 plus dollar burrito is what that was. And it was worth every penny. It was so good. I went home. The bad thing was I only got like one bite of it. Check my... Oh yeah, we're overweight. Hold on. I was thinking I got, had to go back out in there and actually get more meat. I already got enough. So let's drop all that meat. Um, the bad thing was I only got like one bite of it. So I was very hungry for the next five hours or however long it was <laughs> that I couldn't swallow. And I knew how good it was, and I'm like, dang, I just want to eat this thing. And uh, even cold or, or warmed up, it was still amazing. So, Victor's Taco Shop, if it comes to an area near you, 
um, and you work at Taco Bell, start getting your resume updated. That's all I can say. Because this place is, uh, yeah, it's a Taco Bell uh, Del Taco killer for sure. All right, so we got a bunch of meat. We're warm, we're winded, we're peckish. We've got quite a bit of water. I think I'm going to start to sleep cycling now. Um, so, let's see. No, I'm going to go do some, gather some more wood. We don't have a whole heck of a lot of wood. And uh, even though it's pretty warm in that cabin, you pretty much don't need wood. I might need some for cooking up that meat, so might as well just do it real quick now. While I have you on the, on the line here, so to speak. Oh, wait, I didn't even pick those up, did I? <laughs> That's been so long since I went out and actually chopped wood, I guess. All right. Oh, it's fir wood. That's awesome. I like fir wood. I'm cool with that. There's normally one up here. Yeah, there's one up here. Keep an eye out for any rogue wolves running around here, too. More fir wood. Okay, let's do it. Break it on down. Let me check my hatchet, make sure my tools are on. Doing decent. Yeah, I got two hatchets. I'm actually running around with two hatchets, huh? Well, I died due to not having a hatchet in the Iron Man series. So we're going to definitely make sure that doesn't happen again, apparently. Let's go grab some more up here real quick. This is a branch or... Oh, it's cedar. Okay, good. Let's do it. See how our health is doing. I'm a little tired. Getting a little peckish. I don't even know why I need. No. Maybe I do need tender blocks. I don't know. Never really checked. How much weight are we at now? 60. Oh, we're good. Okay, let's keep going here. I think this will be the last one here. Three hours of daylight left. Got quite a bit of wood now. Hmm. What is this? That's probably a brand. Oh, no, that's cedar wood. Okay. Let's check here. Yeah, let's do it. Man, I remember how much of a struggle it was just to go out and grab one of these without freezing to death. Now I'm out here just chopping away. Literally clear-cutting this forest. This looks like it might be a... No, that's a branch. That's a branch. Yeah, okay. How much weight are we up to now? 73? Yeah, let's do one more. I can see that we're starting to get a little fatigue reaction there on the uh, carry weight, but uh, I'm, I don't know. I think that's another branch, isn't it? There's a couple out here. Let's just grab these. I'm going to have plenty of wood, that's for sure. Yeah, so that was almost a $300 burrito, but man, oh, it was so good. So you know what I did? I was only able to eat like half of the burrito because it was huge. And um, anyway, uh, so I saved the other half for my wife to take to work today. Well, she ran out and forgot it or something. I don't know. She, and uh, she hadn't eaten there. I was the only one that had eaten there. And me and my oldest daughter. And uh, I figured when my wife came home, I was going to be able to run out there because they were open till like 10. My wife normally goes home at 8.30. I was going to be able to run out there and go uh, grab her some fresh uh, Mexican from this place. And Then I had the food impaction, which pretty much threw a monkey wrench in everything. So anyway, I guess uh, I wasn't sure she probably didn't want leftovers for the next day. Uh, but uh, So there's a half burrito, so I had that for breakfast today. And then uh, went out, spent the day with the kids because I was off today. Um... We went to do two different parks, playgrounds, and uh, had a lot of fun. And then uh, I asked my, my daughter, uh, she said, hungry, hungry, you know, rubbing her tummy. And I said, uh, well, there's more over there, too. I said, uh, what do you want to eat? And then normally her go-to answer at this point is either fries, meaning McDonald's, or pizza. So anyway, it was pizza. Or not pizza. I'm sorry, it wasn't pizza. It was tacos. And I was like, <laughs> that's right. So we, we literally went back there again, and uh, I had it for breakfast and for lunch. Um, so actually, I've had it for dinner, breakfast, and lunch. I haven't eaten anything other than Victor's Taco Shop for the last 24 hours, and uh, I don't regret it one bit. So we got plenty of wood here. All right, time for some sleep cycling. And we are ravenous. 
All right, let's grab some food here real quick. Make room. What I'll do is I'll grab a little bit of food out of here. I think I had a partial back there behind me too. I know that's a partial right there that I just picked up. We want to eat. Okay, we'll eat that partial just because it is a partial. We'll eat this one since it's about to, to turn green. Eat that one. Eat those two. Yeah, we're real close to the sleep cycle. Yeah, let's get this in our bellies. Eat that one first. Uh, where was that partial? I'll eat that one now. And I'll eat one of these. That one. I think we're going to be pretty much... Yeah, we can't fit it. Did I get... How did I get food poisoning off of that? That was some pr pretty decent help. Oh, oh well, well, we're ready to... Uh, <laughs> we're ready to... Uh, do I need to do this and rest? Do that or that and rest? Can you until you treat it, it passes or you die. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and just chomp down on some pills there real quick. And now we got 10 hours of rest, okay. And let's get something to drink. Well, we're being forced to sleep cycle. So, all right, well, let's see here. I guess it puts us, I think I ended, I had to stop the episode at about the 18 minute mark. I think I got another eight minutes here. So let's put it at about 26 minute mark. Let's go ahead and knock out this food poisoning and then I shall bid you adieu. Let's see, you're tired. That's the only thing that we need to worry about plus the food poisoning. And we're in good good health, so that shouldn't be an issue. I want to just rest for three hours. See, I don't think our I don't think our condition will go down since we've treated it with antibiotics. It should just stay right where it's at. No improvement, but it should just stay at 98%. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to double check. The last thing I want to do is sleep sleep for eight hours and wake up with like five percent health, a blurry vision, and a thumping in my head, and die in this uh, cabin full of <laughs> of loot. Um, 53 degrees in here, 97. So see, it's slowly dwindling down. So we're going to need to uh, sleep for another seven hours here. Let's uh, get something to drink here real quick. I should just go ahead and eat again because there's no risk. So let's do it. I guess you could get food poison again and it could just re... I'd have to take pills again plus I'd have to do another 10 hours. I guess I could do that. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Maybe. All right, so let's see here. How's my clothing doing? Everything's doing really good. I'm gonna take the hat off for now. Anything else wearing out pretty quick? Hmm, that's fine. I'm not too worried about the rest of the stuff. Everything else is doing really good. It's not wearing out at all. That wolf skin coat is doing great. So, all right, um, seven more hours, we can do that. And we survived 34 days. That's pretty good. Let's rest and see where we're at. Good deal. Almost 35 hours. Good thing we got our uh, wood all ready to go here. 43 degrees in here. We're in good shape. Plus we get the warmth bonus from the uh, bed. So we're sort of living the ri life of Riley at this point. I mean, we're doing really good for ourselves. Uh, and we're pretty much full. Yeah. All right. So one hour of darkness left. Let's go ahead and pass that so we can start the next episode with uh, daylight. I shall bid you adieu. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the tip jar on the main channel if you feel inclined. Or if you want to become a producer, go ahead on over to patreon.com forward slash accurize2. And hopefully I'm done being sick and in the ER and dealing with sick family members and all that stuff for the rest of the year. Hopefully the decade. I know that's wishful thinking. But uh, with my little disease factory of a family that we have here, I'm a, I go into dirty houses all the time as a cop. And my wife goes into the surgical ICU as a nurse or as a BSN. So... <laughs> Yeah, we, we come home with some pretty funky stuff, and uh, then, you know, the little ones end up getting it, which isn't cool at all. But uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I think it'll be episode 29, should be. So uh, y'all take care wherever you might be, and if you happen to be close to a Victor's Taco Shop, 
check it out. Like you should have stopped the video a long time ago and went and checked it out. So just uh, small bites, chew, chew fully, and then swallow. Okay. Yeah, I'll take care.